the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. How do a few refinements and tweaks plus a big upgrade to the midsole now make this probably one of the best carbon plated super shoes for every runner on the market today. I've not been the biggest Saucony Endorphin fan on this channel for some time, until recently, and I picked up the Speed 4, which I already did an initial impressions review on and a couple comparisons, I'll put links in the description to that, and the Pro 4, because I was curious about some of these updates for this 2024 generation. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the Pro 4 through the lens of comparing it to the top tier of super shoes, the other super shoes, the Vaporflies, Alpha Flies, Audios Pro, the Metaspeeds, because I do have a lot of experience with those. So if you're looking for a comparison between the Endorphin Pro 4 and the Endorphin Pro 3, that's not going to be this video. But if you want to know how it stacks up against the real top tier bleeding edge of super shoes out there on the market today, then stick around, this will be the video for you. As with all my initial impressions video, let's start with the specs of this shoe. What we have here, according to Running Warehouse, which is where I pull all my specs from, is 40 mil of foam in the heel, 32 mil of foam in the forefoot, though Saucony will say it's 39 and a half mil in the heel and 31 and a half in the forefoot, but you're never gonna feel that half a millimeter. Either way, it gives you an eight mil drop. Now this midsole is all Power Run PB with a core of Power Run HG, which I'll talk about in the run section, but it's a big upgrade from the previous versions of this shoe. The shoe comes in at 7.7 .7 ounces or 218 grams, which makes this shoe about one ounce, a little bit more than one ounce to about 30 grams-ish heavier than the real top tier of Super Shoes, the Vaporflies, the Metaspeeds. Um, I'm excluding the Evo 1 from Adidas because that shoe is just insanely lightweight, but it puts it on par with something like an Adidas Adios Pro 3 and, you know, shoes in that area. And the weight specs are for the US men's size 9 reference size that every brand uses, and that happens to be my size as well. And weighing my own pair of these, I get a very similar weight of about 218 to 219 grams between left and right. So build quality is really spot on for this shoe. Starting out the upper on this shoe, I'm going to say that if you watch my initial impressions review for the Speed 4, I was very, very harsh on that upper. Uh, baggy, ill-fitting, vague-fitting, cheap. I do not like the upper on the Speed 4, even though I do like the Speed 4. However, on this shoe, the story is a little different. It's a little bit more mixed here. I think this hexagonal uh, textile or mesh that they use for the upper is exceptional. I think it's a really beautiful material and I think it fits really well. It conforms to the foot really well. It's soft. It wraps around the foot. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of stretch in it and it gives you a fairly decent lockdown. There are still some cheap feeling overlays. This suede around the heel collar and this suede thing on the heel counter. I just, we don't need this. This, this was such a streamlined upper. We just don't need this fake suede on here. And Saucony really can't help themselves with these weird heel counter sort of posting things that they have going on. This reminds me of the big plastic thing that was on the Endorphin Speed, the original Endorphin Speed, though this is soft fake suede, so it's not quite as obtrusive. But overall, I think the textile and the finish of this upper is actually really nice. And I think the fit is actually really good. But, and there's always a but, the biggest two problems I have with this upper is one, the laces. Now these are the laces that came with the shoe. You can see I've put on different laces. The problem with these laces, and you'll see it immediately, is that they're extremely stretchy. They are one of the most stretchy laces I've ever seen. In fact, I put a first run short out about running in this shoe and usually I do those first runs in front of my house on the same road. I usually run maybe, you know, 500 meters, maybe a kilometer. But I made it about 400 meters in this shoe with these stock laces. And I realized, nope, that's it. I came back into the house and changed it to these laces, which I think are from an old pair of Metaspeeds I, I pulled out. Non-stretchy laces, essentially. And that's important for this upper because this upper is a booty fit upper. Now, why manufacturers are still putting booty uppers on race shoes is beyond me. 
It originally was to save weight, but I think ASICS has shown with the Metaspeed Paris series that you can put a proper upper on a ratio with a proper tongue, and it's going to be way lighter than this. And I just don't understand booty uppers. Booty uppers with stretchy laces are even worse because that is instant toenail killer. I still have black toenails, toenail problems from running in Alpha Fly 1s and Alpha Fly 2s. I dislike booty style uppers intensely. But as far as a booty style upper goes in the lockdown of this, this is okay. It's not the end of the world. I just wish there was a real tongue in this shoe. And I think what saves it is they actually do put real lace loops at the top of the eyelet chain where you can do a runner's knot, you can do whatever knot you want in there, and you'll get good lockdown. Plus the upper textile, the mesh material for this upper, does hold your foot really well. And I think it does a good job overall. But overall, booty upper, stretchy laces, no thank you. But the textile, the finish, the fit, the last, everything about this upper I think is really, really well done. And I actually think it's quite a beautiful upper. Just wish I could have a real tongue in this shoe for once. Moving to the midsole of this shoe, it is all Power Run PB, at least that you can see, except for this little chunk back here, which is Power Run HG. And that's actually a core that runs over the entire length of the shoe. Basically, your foot is sitting on a core of Power Run HG, which is a newer foam from Saucony that has better resilience, better energy return than Power Run PB. And I will say, you really do notice it in this shoe. It makes this shoe actually stand out and compete with the top tier of super shoes, though it's not quite there yet, which I'll get to. But overall, this midsole is really nice. It has Saucony Speed Roll technology, which I've talked about a bunch of times now, but essentially that is the geometry of the plate, so the curve in the plate. Now this is a low plate configuration shoe, so that means the plate starts high, dips in the midfoot, comes close to the ground here, then curves up into a toe spring. And the difference with Saucony is that the Speed Roll technology is the toe spring of the plate comes up way above the flat of the heel, and that gives you a really smooth and energetic sort of propulsive roll forward in a non-aggressive way. It never feels like you're falling off a cliff. And overall, the midsole in the shoe and the geometry of the speed roll technology with the very stiff carbon fiber plate, so this is the Pro, so it has a carbon fiber plate, which is actually a very stiff carbon fiber plate, really rolls you forward, but does give you some propulsion from the carbon fiber, especially on toe off. So you do notice that sort of pop from the midfoot and the spoon sort of flattening out and pushing off. But I wouldn't say this is a bouncy shoe or this midsole is bouncy at all. It's more of a snap off the toe, which is that carbon feel. This shoe definitely has it. And lastly, moving to the outsole of this shoe, it's a very similar outsole that you will find on the Speed 4 as well. However, there's more rubber going down the lateral side further into the midfoot of the shoe which I think helps overall with the just feel of the shoe because I think the traction in the shoe is a little bit better than the Speed 4, though the Speed 4 is actually very good. You just have a little bit more rubber in the shoe, but it's the same lattice pattern. You got the same foot uh, feel and compliance to the ground, though there is a carbon fiber plate in here that's very stiff, so you're not getting quite the same amount of feel as you do in the Speed 4. But overall, I think it's a great outsole. I like what Saucony is doing with this generation of uh, outsoles on the Speed and the Pro. Very similar. Similar story here in the heel. Um, in fact, I think it's nearly identical. Um, but again, Power Run PB, even though there's a lot of exposed Power Run PB foam here, it's very durable and it will last quite some time, which is good because I think this shoe really is engineered and geared for heel strikers and midfoot strikers over forefoot strikers. So overall, I think it's a good outsole. It should be very durable and it should withstand a lot of training and racing miles. So what is it like to run in this shoe? Well, I'm gonna say out of the gate, I've really enjoyed running this shoe. I'm really surprised actually. I actually think this shoe works really well for my biomechanics and I've been pleasantly surprised with this shoe. Now, as I said, I'm gonna compare this shoe against the top tier of super shoes, the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, the Metaspeeds, the Audios Pro and the Evo One which I don't think this shoe's quite at that level, but I've always thought of the Endorphin Pro as the best of the rest. While it's not in that top tier, it's probably the best option of all the other carbon-plated shoes out there, 
And I would stand by that now that I've run about 32 kilometers or about 20 miles into the shoe, which is about what I put on a carbon plated super shoe for an initial impressions video. Now, most of that running that I've done in this shoe, that 32K, has been at marathon pace or faster. I'd say 75 to 80% of the time I've spent in this shoe thus far to do this initial impressions video has been marathon pace or faster, maybe up to 10K. And the shoe has performed really, really well, and it's really surprised me. Now, while the ride of the shoe, because of the carbon plate in it, is considerably different than the Speed 4, there are some similarities in the sense that the power on PB that's under the plate cushions that initial foot strike. Now, I'm a four foot striker, so it, it cushions that initial strike. You feel that cushion, then you feel the plate sort of engage, firms up the shoe. But now the difference in the way this one rides is not the stiffness of the carbon fiber plate, it's the power in HG core that runs under the entire foot of this shoe. That foam, you actually feel a little bit more sink than power on PB. And on toe off, when the speed roll rolls you forward, the energy return of that foam is much, much higher. You really do notice. Again, it's not a bouncy feeling, but it's more of a snap. It's a propulsive snap. Some of that, again, is the carbon fiber kind of snap that's signature carbon fiber. But that power and HG core in this shoe really, really, I think, upgrades this shoe to make it really compete with, I think, those top tier super shoes, even though this one is a little bit more user friendly than some of those top tier shoes. And what do I mean by user friendly? Well, it's really two things to me. One is the foam. So if we look at this foam matrix, which I've showed in many other videos, and again, we have Nike Zoom X on one side being the very soft and high resilience foam, and then we have Light Strike Pro on the other end being the very firm and spring-like uh, resilience uh, super foam. You can begin to see where some of the other foams fit. The, a the new A6 FF Turbo is kind of right in the middle. The Light Strike Pro Evo foam is, you know, closer to Zoom X, but it doesn't have that sink or the resiliency. You know, FF Turbo is sort of over there in the more direct side. And then I put Power Run PB about there, where I think it makes a lot of sense because it is soft, but it has sort of mid-range resiliency to me, which I think works out really well to make Power Run PB as versatile as it, as it is. However, Power Run HG goes here. Now, it is a little bit firmer than Power Run PB, but the resiliency is extremely noticeable. The energy return and the, the way it helps propel your foot forward is significantly different. And I think that core that's in this shoe, I think really extends the range of usability for how well this shoe will work for really running fast road racing miles or kilometers. The other aspect to usability for me is that this shoe kind of feels like a normal shoe. It doesn't feel extreme like a lot of the top tier super shoes do. Now, if you run in a Vaporfly or a Metaspeed or an Adios Pro, you know that they do have a very aggressive and sort of extreme feel to them. And they take some getting used to, and they may not be for everyone. But this shoe, I think, runs more like a normal shoe. This feels much more um, conservative, or I would even call it pedestrian. This shoe, if you run in really any running shoe, kind of makes sense. And you anyone can really step into this, and it makes sense. It feels kind of normal, though it is a little bit faster, and you do feel that. But overall, it's a very normal-feeling shoe, which I think is a huge strength of it. And there's one other thing which I think will benefit a lot of runners too, is that like most Saucony shoes, I actually think this shoe is more engineered for heel strikers and midfoot strikers than forefoot strikers. Now as a forefoot striker, that limits the usability or me picking this shoe over other options. Like most of the top tier super shoes out there, I think are engineered more for forefoot striking. But this one I think is really engineered for heel strikers and midfoot strikers. A lot of that is the wide medial and lateral heel flares uh, in this heel and just some, sort of Saucony DNA. They always put some stability elements in the heel and the midfoot of their shoes. And this one's no different. So if you are a heel striker or midfoot striker, this may be a super shoe to look at because the top tier options aren't always the best for heel strikers. But this one's going to work, I think, really well. And most importantly, it's going to be very durable for heel strikers because of power run PB. 
Encasing the power in HD foam and power in PB foam, I think, has made the durability of this shoe that much better. And I think that's going to benefit a ton of runners as well. So how fast does this shoe feel? Now, I said that a lot of the time I've actually spent in this shoe to make this initial impressions has been at marathon pace or faster. And I'm going to say this shoe feels very fast. It feels actually very efficient and it works really well for my gait. I have no problem running my normal paces in this shoe. But the thing about this shoe is that I do feel like there's a bit of a limiter here. It isn't quite on par with the top tier of super shoes, the Vaporflies, the Metaspeeds, the Audios Pro. Those definitely have a little bit more to them, a little bit more rebound, a little bit more bounce, a little bit more snap, or a lot with running and racing especially, there's a psychological component. Now, I'm a non-elite runner. I am not pushing pace or world record anywhere. I don't need to be running in the top tier of super shoes out there like Vaporflies or Metaspeeds, but I want to. I'm going to pick that shoe every day because they fit my foot well. I'm a four-foot striker. But mentally, if I'm running in a shoe that I know is way better than me, um, I'm going to push further. I'm going to push harder. I don't want the shoe to limit me, even though I'm getting nowhere near the performance capabilities of the shoes. In this shoe, this shoe doesn't feel like it has quite that range. Again, it's probably much faster than I actually am, but at the same time, mentally, why would I pick this shoe over one of those shoes that I know is just going to not get in my way, where this one, it does feel a bit like I will get to the performance range of this shoe at some point. Not that it's close and, you know, likely I'm not going to actually hit that, but it feels like I can get there. So again, it's that weird psychological thing with racing is that I'm going to pick the faster shoe, the one that feels faster, makes me feel faster. And this shoe is fast. The data in the biomechanics that I'm seeing in the times and the HRs and all the stuff from my data, which, by the way, if you don't follow me on Strava, there's a link in the description. You can see all that stuff on Strava. And while you're down there, follow me on Instagram or just go search for this uh, username. But when I look at my data in this shoe, I'm seeing um, comparable data to any of the top tier super shoes. But mentally, I don't feel as fast in, this, fast in this shoe. And that's sort of the deal breaker for me. It's not that it's bad. It's just I want to run in that fast shoe that makes me feel and think that I'm fast. I have a lot of experience running in those top tier shoes. I've run in Vaporflies for years. I've run in Alpha Flies. I've run in the Metaspeeds. I've run in the Audios Pro 3 quite a bit now. I'm used to sort of the extreme edginess and aggressiveness of those shoes. But if I was just getting into running and just sort of, you know, stepping into carbon plated shoes and looking for my first marathon racer, this is probably the best one out there. Because again, you don't have to have perfect form in this shoe. I think the sweet spot for this shoe, whether you're a heel striker, midfoot striker, or forefoot striker, it's going to work and it's going to work beautifully. You're getting a very durable package. You're getting power in HG right under the foot, which is a beautiful foam. Power in PB foam is very durable. You get a good fit. And this shoe is about, you know, 25 to 50 USD cheaper than the real top tier options. So, it's an awesome option for the, your first carbon fiber shoe, or it's an excellent option if you want a carbon fiber super shoe that feels more like a normal running shoe. That's definitely what this shoe is. Additionally, I also think this shoe is a good carbon plated super shoe option for people with wide feet. Now, this isn't a wide shoe, but it's much wider and this upper material is much more generous than any of the real top tier shoes, especially something like a Metaspeed, which has a very tight and aggressive race fit. This has a very good fit, but I think if you have a wider foot, this is going to be a good option for you because there's more room in here. But again, it's not a wide shoe. It's just going to be your best super shoe option. And again, like I've already said, for heel strikers, I think this is going to be an excellent shoe because there's a lot of medial and lateral um, heel flares in here that are going to contain your your uh, stride and they're going to help center your foot so you can engage the plate. Um, I think it's going to be very durable back here. I just think for people that are maybe heavier runners, bigger runners, you have a wider foot, you're a heel striker, this is also an excellent option for a carbon plated super shoe. So overall, I'm very positive on this shoe. I think it's a great shoe. I'm actually really surprised how much I actually really like this shoe. 
Again, from a build quality, from just the materials and finish, this feels like a premium product, not like the Speed 4 does. And like the Speed 4, it runs like a premium product. But it's not a shoe that I'm going to use very much because I think for a trainer, um, I'm going to pick something like the Endorphin Speed 4 because I like the flexibility of the plate. And in fact, I wish that Saucony maybe put a little bit more flex in the carbon fiber plate of this shoe to bring some of that flexibility that's in the Speed 4 into this shoe because I think it would make it better. It doesn't need a lot, just needs a little bit more flex. And maybe some of that will break in as this shoe gets more miles on it, but carbon doesn't usually do that. So I just wish this shoe was a little bit more flexible. Then I would think about using it more for a trainer. I don't think I'd ever race in this because like I said, I'm going to race in the top tier of super shoes because I want to feel fast. I want that mental angle. And this shoe just doesn't have that, but it's a fun shoe to run in. And I'm definitely going to keep it around to compare it with other super shoes that come out this year and in the future because it is very good. And I think it's probably the best carbon plated super shoe for every other runner who doesn't want one of the top tier super shoes out there. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.